It's great to see so many of you and members and students of Alliance Francaise. Some of you are probably joining for the first time. We're so happy to have Anina Bell and Sebastian Danini joining us again, this time for this Valentine's Day themed um, baking demo. Thank you so much, Anina Bell and Sebastian, for joining us. Bonjour. Bonjour. Um, <laughs> And so for those of you who are probably joining for the first time, let me briefly introduce Anina Bell and Sebastian to you. So Anina Bell uh, is a Canadian American hotelier, writer, blogger. She's known as Le Chef's Wife on her blog and on Instagram and a passionate home cook uh, who is sharing joie de vivre from the French Riviera with us all. She met her husband, French chef Sebastian, who is here with us as well. Back in France, they married in Nice and lived in France for eight years before moving to Canada and finally settling down in Washington, DC. So Sebastian was born and raised in the port town of Toulon in the south of France. And at the age of 14, he started working in Michelin star kitchens before working his way through to become executive chef at many luxurious hotels around the world in France, Canada, and United States. And they love cooking, they love cooking together, and they love sharing this experience with you. Um, and with no further ado, I'm handing it over to you, Anina Bell and Sebastian. <laughs> and this is our son here, who is 18 months old and uh, was born in Washington, D.C. So I'm really happy to do uh, this recipe. And bonjour tout le monde. Thank you so much for coming back. <laughs> We've got to prepare his bottles for this at the same time. Um, thank you so much for coming back. We are so excited to be here for our sixth, I believe, um, cooking demonstration with Alliance Francaise, Natasha and Sarah. It is always such a pleasure. Um, we love doing it and we love the community that this has created. So thank you very much to everyone who shows up time and time again. Um, as Natasha said, I have a blog, Le Chef's Wife. This is a passion project. I am a full-time working mom with two kids under the age of five. Um, and yet I absolutely love writing and photographing um, our family cooking, our family recipes, and also um, how we maintain that joie de vivre, as Natasha said, um, every day living in the DMV um, and holding on to that French Riviera style of life while being in a busy household with two kids and meeting bottles and everything else. Um, this recipe is so special to us because this is actually the first dessert that you ever, oh, maybe not the first. No, it is the first. It's the first dessert that he ever made me. Um, first, he made it for me at uh, his restaurant, L'Auberge La Vigneto, which was a five-star hotel outside of Cannes. Um, and it was just the most incredible dessert I had ever tasted. And I couldn't believe when Sebastian started to show me how I could make it at home, that it could be actually that easy. Um, the lava effect on this molle au chocolat is just jaw dropping. And it's the richest, most decadent, but also not too sweet uh, dessert. And so it is a tradition of ours that we like to make it for each other on Valentine's Day. Um, and so we're really happy to share this recipe with you. And this recipe has had a bit of a viral moment on Instagram um, in the past week, which was really exciting for us as well. Um, so please do go check it out. Share support is always helpful um, as we, yeah, as we're content creators and putting uh, our images and videos out there. So thank you for the support. So first things first is an equipment check because um, the moiler is not complicated, but it does require a little bit of equipment. One, I'm gonna show you here, is the pastry rings. So these are three inches um, wide and one inch 75 tall. Um, I linked them in the blog post so that you can get them off of Amazon. Uh, these are by Ateco, I believe. And then we also have this stainless steel um, sizzling platter. The sizzling platter is very, very helpful for um, being able to uh, easily remove the moelleux au chocolat and never bends, never warps, and can go into the, into the washing machine very easily. And then also another thing that is very important for the moelleux au chocolat, pastry scale. If you don't have a pastry scale, if you're at the level that you're making moelleux au chocolat, I highly recommend that you invest in a pastry scale. They're about $25. I use mine all the time. It's really the only way that you can make sure that a recipe is perfect every single time. So we're gonna start with, um, this much sweet. We're gonna start with actually showing you um, a little bit in reverse so that we can pull out the moelleux all together at the same time. Um, we made 
l'appareil, which is the batter we made this uh, a couple hours ago, you need at least one hour um, in the fridge of chilling time for the moelleux. And this is really important to point out, whenever you're filming something like creme pâtissière or chocolate, anything that could develop a little bit of a film on top or a crust, make sure you're putting the saran wrap directly on top of the batter. Um, this is a really great tip for uh, making sure that you don't get that kind of slimy crust on the top. Chocolat batter here. I love that he's my sous chef. I think it's amazing. My husband leads kitchens that are like 110 people. And in our home, um, he's often my sous chef. <laughs> um, so we're going to actually show you how we put the parchment paper um, in the pastry rings. Uh, to this up? Okay. Okay. When you use this one, you know the quickest one, it's very easy, you just have to cut in half, like that. Very important that it was very straight. The knife, and you just put the knife, you know, between both of them. Now, you have two pieces. When you have, you know, this small strength here, you can see with a knife straight or with a scissor, you know, it's the same. Huh? I would have used scissors personally. <laughs> when it's straight like that, it's perfect. After that, you just have to roll them, you know, just with the two fingers like that, you roll. To be sure it's fit on the on the ring. When you have too much paper, you know, you need to cut a little bit to be sure it's fit. Does that mean we are going to cut, you know, probably five centimeters? And now we are going to roll it one more time. This is perfect. You see? Let's do the second one. Now you have, you know, on your pan, you have the first slate, you know, to be sure that they don't move. You have the two ring and you have the paper. Perfect. Mm -hmm. After that, you need to put a little bit of spray. The spray, to the spray. Oui. So, si tu veux reculer pour qu'on vous voit, there we go. Uh, my apologies. So, this is canola oil, um, just non-stick cooking spray that we use. And if you don't have canola oil, then feel free to use a little bit of butter on oh, the butter. side, um, or coconut oil, or any kind of spray. Uh, et comme ça. Voilà. And I just sprayed it on one side so that it creates kind of like an adhesive for making this little hat um, that you then put in the pastry ring. And I'm going to also spray some of the cooking oil on the um, parchment paper here so that when we take the moelleux au chocolat out of the oven, it comes off really easy. Voilà. C'est important que ça soit contre les rendements. And he says it's very important that the paper be against the pastry ring. You want it to fill up, you want it to be as round as the pastry ring, that you don't have a paper cone inside that is smaller than the pastry ring, because then you're going to have a kind of misshapen um, moelleux au chocolat. If you follow these directions, you will have a Michelin star worthy moelleux au chocolat um, because it's going to be perfectly uh, even and round and it will look absolutely beautiful. So I'm just, I just put a little bit more cooking spray on one edge. nicely sprayed in both of these um, pastry rings. So here we're just making two. If you were making four, you would do four pastry rings, um, but we're gonna show you with two. And also because I really don't wanna have five moelleux au chocolat to eat myself afterwards, because you know I'm gonna eat every single last bite of these. They're, they're absolutely amazing. So we're gonna take the chocolate batter um, that I'm gonna show you how to make in just one second here, but just so that we can show you in the efficiency of the cooking class today, um, we're gonna put this in the oven right now, and then we're gonna go back and make the batter together. Look, look at this, that was beautiful. Oh my gosh, I just wanna eat that. That looks like an incredible mousse. 
And he's being very careful as he's putting the batter inside the ring, not to um, get it on the sides. Because if you get it on the sides, then you will also have, uh, it will cook on the sides as well. Pastry rings can be used for a lot of things as well, so it's not an investment that you would make just for a moelleux au chocolat. C'est quoi les autres choses qu'on pourrait faire avec les... On peut faire des petits entremets, nougat glacé. Yeah. Ça, c'est magnifique, nougat glacé, c'est petit soufflé. <laughs> little soufflés, this is for another day. Um, also, uh, like sous vide egg bites, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're doing sous vide egg bites, a pastry ring works really well as well. So we are going to put this to the side because we're going to make this together with you now. And we're going to pop this in the Can oven. I'm going to show it to you first, what it looks like here. I'm getting chocolate on my screen, but if you can see oh, right there. Um, so they, it's just kind of roughly put in um, uh, and it is filled up really just um, above the edge of the pastry ring itself. So, it will puff up nicely in the oven. Our oven is at 350 degrees. It is a hot oven. It's been, we've been letting it sit hot for about 20 minutes um, to make sure that the oven is really nice and hot for the moelleux au chocolat as we want the even cooking temperature. And we're gonna put it on the middle rack. Um, we've taken off the top, top rack and we're gonna let it sit there for, we're gonna check on it in 15 minutes. Um, cooking temperatures vary greatly. So make sure to check on it earlier than later. And I'm going to set my microwave uh, oven timer, which if you have attended previous classes, you know that that is my best friend, because if not, I would forget um, everything I'm doing. Chocolate. So we're going to do the chocolate. Um, what I have here are Valrona. Um, Manjari. Manjari. Yeah. Manjari is the 64, you know, uh, what is that? 64 cacao, you know, from Madagascar, very fruity, you know, and... Um, very, a uh, lot of acidity, tangy. This is very nice, very good. So I really like this because it's not too sweet. This is 64% dark chocolate, and it's actually really easy to use in these um, les pastilles. Um, and I'm going to mix it directly with the butter. So you could do this in the bain marie, but we're actually going to do this in the microwave um, because it's really easy to do. Oh, thank you. And the butter is chopped into little pieces um, so that it blends nicely in with the chocolate. I'm still filling up my rings. It's a very meticulous project. <laughs> it is a meticulous pro process. Um, and it's good to take the time to, to do it neatly because if you rush that process, then, um, then you're gonna have the cooked uh, chocolate on the sides and it's just not as pretty. And we're really looking for a pretty dessert. So while the chocolate is melting in the microwave and we just use the melt function, um, if, your mic if your microwave does not have a melt function, um, then just check it every 30 seconds and um, stir it with a spatula. We want to make sure we're not overcooking our chocolate in the microwave um, because if you burn the chocolate, then you will really taste the burns. It's best that you still have chunks of chocolate in the bowl um, because those will melt as you are stirring with the spatula. The spatula. So I'm actually going to whisk my eggs first. So I have my eight eggs that are right here. And I'm going to whisk them until they become whitened. That's one minute of melting. It would be one more minute. And then, yeah. And I'm going to add in the sugar now as they are. Um, as they are getting whiter. Bring it little by little. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna leave this to the side here. Now we wanna make sure that we're stirring the chocolate very nicely with the butter. And it's actually, and we're going to let it cool as we're doing that. As it, um, cause the last thing you wanna do is add the eggs to the hot chocolate at the, um, right when it comes out of the microwave. Cause guess what that makes? Scrambled eggs. Um, so this is the chocolate with the, with the butter. Um, and as you can see, it's really nice and smooth. Um, it has a beautiful shine to it. I mean, that's that's really sexy chocolate. I would just eat that on my own. Um, it's beautifully brilliant, has a nice shine. 
So you melted both chocolate and butter in the microwave, correct? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. It's, 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 For... it's very important because you want to have the chocolate, you know, melt at the right temperature, not too high. The microwave oven, you know, working very well instead of the bain marie, and it stays very brilliant, you know, when we put the butter. Can you show me? So you could actually do this in the bain marie, but we discovered that our microwave oven has a melt function and it works beautifully. So if yours has a melt function, then do use it, please. If you don't have melt function, it's the same. Right. And also very important is to use a spatula, a rubber spatula for mixing the chocolate as opposed to a whisk. If you use it with a whisk, you will be bringing air bubbles into the chocolate. Um, and we're not looking for air bubbles. We don't want them. How are you feeling about this now, Chef? And if we wanted to make chocolate covered strawberries, you could just dip the strawberries in that. Would you need to add anything else to the chocolate? No? Sure. And so, so if anyone wants to make chocolate um, covered strawberries at the same time, just dip the, um, maybe put a little bit on the side and uh, dip the strawberries in that um, side portion of chocolate. And then you can have chocolate stra covered strawberries at the same time as your moelleau au chocolat. I have my eggs that are nicely blanchi avec yes, du sucre. And Sébastien is going to mix the chocolate into the um, eggs that are blanchied with the sugar. And he's making sure to scrape every last ounce of chocolate um, into, the, into the bowl mm -hmm. to, to really get it. Okay. And now he's going to um, whisk them together. And you have to make sure to really nicely whisk them so that um, you don't see a separation between the eggs and the butter and the chocolate, that everything is well incorporated together. Always to the center with a small movement to be sure all of the uh, matière, how do you say matière? All of the batter. All of the batter, you know, came always around. Or mixture. You know? Yeah. You see like that. Fit in here right now. No. The flour. And now we're gonna add in the flour. Very, very important is to sift the flour yes. um, because you don't wanna add in big chunks of flour. It will be clumpy and this is not a dessert to be clumpy. Mm -hmm. um, with French patisserie, you're looking for precision and rigueur. Uh, they are, they are ah, sticklers on that. De rigueur, toujours. <laughs> toujours. Toujours um, de rigueur. And I think that's often a, a case when I'm learning to cook from my husband is that uh, he's really a stickler oh. on the details. In, when I would be reading a recipe, um, an American recipe, sometimes there's not as much precision in the details. Whereas I think with French uh, patisseries specifically, there's um, a lot of attention to the oh, yeah. minutia. Okay. Tu veux que je mélange? So he's, now we're using a, a sieve that has um, very fine uh, holes in it so that we really get a very fine grade of sugar of flour and he's going to do this in several different times he's just tapping the um seep yes is that a seep in english or yeah. yeah um against his hand so that it comes down like a dusting of icing sugar do you put all flour at once like that or no. in batch? <laughs> <laughs> two times. In two times. Mm. He, he does it in, in two times. Uh, in two separate uh, steps. In two, mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. And it's always the same, you know, the whisk, always on the center, you know, with a small movement to be sure you don't have the flour go out of the bowl and after the flour come in the in the in the bottle. center. We're using Duralex glass um bowls that are all in all different sizes. I think this is, I don't know what size this one is. This is the largest one here. Um, we have such a collection of Duralex bowls with the glass bowls. It's great for cooking with kids as well because we portion out all the ingredients first um, and then my daughter and son can mix things together. Um, we love making crepes on a Sunday morning together, mm -hmm. which is really fun. My daughter is an expert at cracking eggs. She I can... like to eat the crepes. <laughs> And then you're just tapping it gently against your hand. Um, so he's actually split it, the flour into three um, and going right from the center and letting the chocolate fold in with the flour. The, the pastry 
two rings are linked in uh, my blog post, Le Moulin au Chocolat blog post. So you only have to go to the blog post and I have equipment needed and the pastry rings are linked in there. So if my daughter was here, she would be eating this right out of the bowl. And I know it's raw egg, but it just smells amazing. Um, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the saran wrap over this. It's fresh. You can keep this for uh, five days, no problem. Um, we're going to put saran wrap right over the top. so that uh, you're covering it properly and you don't have any air between the batter and the film. So I'm gonna put my hand in the middle of the bowl and push the saran wrap down as I'm putting it over the chocolate. A little finicky. Et voila. And so then you have the film right on top of the chocolate like this. And it can keep in the fridge for what? Five, uh, five days. Five days. Nope. Um, so if you wanna make one moule au chocolat today, and then you wanna make a, a few more on the 13th and a few more on the 14th, that's not a problem whatsoever. Um, moule au chocolat um, mixture keeps very well. And we'll probably be making those again on the 14th. That's <laughs> how shitty. Yes. Um, how's the moule looking? Good. Good? Yep. Um, we are going to serve this on just flat white plates here. We love white plates. We have a lot of white plates. Um, I love the presentation on a white plate, especially with the contrast of the chocolate. So it's been 15 minutes. So it's gonna be about another probably five minutes. Five minutes, so it, uh, five minutes after uh, 135. Yeah. Exactly what we put on the recipe, 20 minutes. Which is amazing. Bravo. I love when that happens. Thank you. Because to be honest, before we did this, I said it cooks for 20 minutes. He says, no, 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 no. It cooks for 13 minutes. I said, no, I remember we did this last time and you said 13 minutes and it was actually 20 minutes. And so I wrote in the blog post 20 minutes as we did a whole bunch of tests for 20 minutes. Yes. Um, in so our oven, it is very important that you look every 10 minutes, you know, to be sure that your muelo will be beautiful. Now it's 15 minutes, we are going to put five more minutes. <laughs> um, so yeah, use, use the cooking spray, Elizabeth, to, in, the in the ring and also in the parchment paper. You can't use too much of the cooking spray. Um, as for the flour lumps, comment enlever les, les petits grains de farine dans la... Ah, c'est important de tamiser. Il faut, il faut bien tamiser. Mais si elle a maintenant les lumps, qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire? You need to add... This is not enough. Smaller, yeah. you need to have them smaller than so that. So I don't know if you can see this, like this, Steve, um, he made sure that I didn't use this time because he said it's actually too wide of a, of a bowl. Um, you would get lumps out of it. So you really need to use a, a finer sieve. Okay. Now, if you have lumps in your batter, what do you do? You put a, with the maris like that. Mm, yes. He's going to show you. With the okay. maris, you know. With the maris like that, the spatula. the spatula, you know, on your bowl, you came to take, you know, the lumps and take with, with the batter like that. Um, against the edge of the bowl and breaking them up and just Got folding that. in. So take a little bit more time. It's worth it okay. to get those lumps out. Pushing it right. um, one thing that we're doing, which I don't know if you know this, um, but we're cleaning as we go. This is a number one tip that I learned from my husband. Well, there's a few. One is cleaning as I go. Um, his kitchen is always just as clean when the recipe goes in the oven, as it was before we started. Um, it's important to put things away as you're going. It really helps in, uh, in taking the stress out of cooking because there's nothing more stressful than finishing a recipe and finding an, you know, a sink full of dishes. Um, the second is la mise en place. Uh, uh, merci maman, Suzanne is my maman, um, who is Quebecoise, she lives in British Columbia and uh, she is my French tutor since birth. Um, but yes, merci maman. Uh, mise en place is very important. Mise en place is uh, setting up all of your ingredients before you turn the heat on when you're cooking. And that's especially true, I think, with um, if you're cooking dinner, um, making sure that you have everything ready and at a um, hand's reach before you turn on the heat in your oven or on the stove. Two more minutes? Two more minutes? Two more minutes. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> To be sure that your moelleau chocolat is ready, you know, on the top, 
it needs to be, you know, the color of, um, of uh, the cooked chocolate, you know. If you see that you have a small pasty on the middle, like the same color of the batter, you know, is that mean it's not ready yet. You cannot, you cannot have a small cheminée on the top of it. It needs to be a bombay. Smooth. Bombay. It, it should have like a, um, a domed top. Uh, should not have a hole in the center or a dent in the center because um, that means that it's not fully cooked. And it's always good, you know, to just put two by pan, you know, because mm -hmm. it's very difficult to sort of manoeuvre. Um, it can be a little bit finicky when you are um, taking the Moreo chocolat off the pan onto the plate. You don't want to have it topple over um, or fall or break. Uh, so, oh, oh, we need another minute. Um, it's okay. It was good. It was good. It was good. And the spatula, this one, it's always good to have a large and not, not very thick. Uh, uh, spatula, you know, to take the moelleux correctly. Mm -hmm. se casse on the so you don't want to use, like, I have um, icing spatulas. You don't want to use an icing spatula, even though that's the right uh, small, thickness. Yeah. You're not going to have a sturdy base for your yeah. moelleux chocolat. Okay. It's okay. really good to have a Large. larger, wider um, spatula. This is yeah. by Triangle. Yeah. Um, it's made in Germany. Um, I think I have this linked. If not, then I will go and get it linked. Um, but so yes, this is a little bit one, you know. wider. And that's helpful for being able to take off your moelleux chocolat easily. And this one, this one, when it's flat, you know, it's not good for you to take it because it's more difficult. It's similar to the Yeah, it's really good when there's an elbow to it. Helen is asking, how do you decide that the moelleux is, is well done and not too much done? And what do, what do you want to see in his aspect to decide it's cooked? So you want to see the domed top, um, that it has a smooth, even dome. Um, it should not wiggle when you're taking it out. It should yeah. be it should be firm. Yeah. But stick around the 20 minute time. If you go to 30 minutes, you're going to no, overcook it, um, and you won't have the lava in effect. We're putting it in for 22 minutes in total because he filled them up larger than what we normally yeah. do. I was too generous, but look at that. <laughs> He's happy. <laughs> you see. So uh, this we're thinking it's a little no, like just, it needs one more minute. Just because one. it's jiggling a little bit. Um, if, you, if you put your know, the batter at the same size of the ring, it's 20 minutes, perfect, you know, in a, in a dry heat on a normal oven. If you are more generous, like me, it's two minutes more. <laughs> because we put two centimeters more. And you because can it actually rises, right? Mine, mm -hmm. I think I saw yes. it grows already like a centimeter at least. It's the eggs and the flour um, all together. They're puffing up like mm -hmm. a souffle. In, um... But with the chocolate, be generous. Don't hesitate to put more and more. Ooh, take a risk. It's good, it's good. It's good, it's good. On prend du risque, mais c'est parfait. Pourquoi on prend du risque? Parce que ça va être coulant. C'est important, okay. it's very important to take off all of the small. <laughs> take off all the small, like there's yeah. little, um, uh, pieces that went out on the edge of the moelleux chocolat ring. Um, so we take those off. Yeah, it's very, it's very important that you take off all of the chocolate around the ring because this is all of the batter are going to, uh, to, to um, come on, it's, uh, it's going to stick and be a little bit more difficult um, when you're taking off the ring. So what he's going to do, he's going to first, he's not going to try and take it take the ring off first. He's gonna move the ring um, directly off the tray and put it in the center of the plate. Bravo. Oh, c'est pas chaud. C'est un peu chaud, ça. Pour moi, ça va. My husband has no sensation no. in the tips of his fingers uh, yeah, because uh, he's yeah. used to burning, like I think he burns no. yourself enough when you're 14, 15. When, um, you, when you, first what you need, you know, when you do this, it's a spoon. Take the spoon. Mm -hmm. voilà. After. The ring, you take off the ring. You need to be sure that the ring turn, you know, around the moelleux. And you take off Can the you moelleux. Show? Yeah, just, just turn, you see? Which means it's loose, right? This one, uh, uh, une de plus already been. Ah oui, ah oui, 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 oui. Oh, this one needed one more minute. We took it out a little too early. <laughs> no, 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 no. But it's good because we are going to show you the difference between this one. 
This As one you can see, it's really a lot. It still tastes great. <laughs> table tastes amazing, but it definitely needed another minute. Um, we saw it, it was jiggling as we were taking it out. You don't want it to jiggle. Um, when, when, when you have, you know, on the middle, it's a passy, you know, the small passy, like the lava cake, is that mean you are missing one or two minutes. We are going to see the difference with the second one, and it's good for you, you know, that we learn uh, in life. But the test is really so good. Do be careful, you don't want to overcook it, because of course the beauty of this dessert, um, while it's delicious, if it's overcooked, it's an amazing chocolate cake. Um, the beauty of the dessert is the molten lava effect. There's also a lot of things I've noticed, um, especially with the bread baking, is that so many different factors can affect um, cooking times, uh, from humidity, heat, um, I don't have a temperature gauge in my oven. I'm actually thinking of buying one because I think sometimes the oven heats unevenly as well. So it's really, um, there's a lot of elements <laughs> yeah, that's right, uh, that change cooking time. So always just use your eyes. Okay, this is ready. <laughs> now, you know, it's good that you see that the first one, it was not enough. Look at this one. You see, you don't have the, let me do this. You don't have the ring on the middle, did you see? So it's perfectly smooth and that um, milk chocolate color. You can see here. Yeah. Yeah. The, the way you know that you can see that your chocolate is cooked, it's very important, is that when you take, you know, on the spatula, you don't have any butter stay on the spatula. The first one we make, you know, you don't have any chocolate and butter on the spatula. Chocolate and eggs was cooked, you know, but not enough because it was too high, too much butter in the ring. Now, you know, the same amount of butter in the ring, but cook for uh, five minutes more. Mm. The same thing, you turn the ring. You see, it's good. You take off the ring. And now it's, you know. It looks like a chef's hat. I think it's really you cute. See, you see exactly the same amount of apparel, you know, but we do the mistake. You see the mistake. Perfect. Look at that. Now you take off. And you see now it stays straight. You know, so, so we can take you know this, you know, to be sure it's, it was nice. You can put a little bit of cacao uh, powder, sucre glass. And when you have this on the table, like that, they can stay for four minutes. We can cut now. Yeah. Cut it, yeah. Okay. We ready? One, two, three. Et voilà. Voilà, we have our moule au chocolat. Um, bon appétit. Bon appétit. This one, I think I could have used another minute still. No, because no? No, normally when, when you stay on the plate, you know, and you bring this to the table, it doesn't move, you know, and when we're doing this, you know, it's, it's normal. Okay. Um, but this chocolat coulant right here is just incredible. And then you have the crust of chocolate all around, um, perfectly cooked uh, chocolate cake. And it's just, it's incredibly decadent. The lava cake is nice, and you have this with the ice cream, you know, it's a mix with mm -hmm. hot and, and cold, you know, it's very nice. I'm really excited. There we go. <laughs> oh, you have yours, Natasha? Let's okay. See. <laughs> Magnifique. Magnifique. Really well done, Natasha. Live cooking is no joke. And I have to say, I'm so if anyone is interested, you can join me on Instagram Live. Every single Sunday until February 27th, I'm doing a soup Sunday challenge where I make a different soup recipe every single Sunday morning at 11 a.m., a tradition that my mom taught me when we were kids and that I continued on in my adult life, and I really enjoy sharing it with everyone. So you can join me for soup Sunday on Sunday mornings until February 27th at the end of the challenge. Um, but I'm cooking live on Instagram, and it's, it's really, it's no joke cooking live. Anything can happen. I feel like he's my safety net. He makes, um, he keeps I me from making mistake. any mistakes. I make the mistake. I'm sorry. It, it's different when uh, <laughs> when he's not there next to me, like during the Soup Sunday Lives, he's not um, cooking next to me, he's watching our kids. And so it, it, sometimes it can get a little bit interesting, but cooking live is a lot of fun. Yeah. So I hope you've all enjoyed this um, demonstration on the Moelle au Chocolat, the most romantic dessert. Um, in my opinion, it is the beginning of our love story, which was 18 years ago. And uh, here we are today. So, merci à vous. Merci, merci. Natasha. Merci, Sarah. Merci à merci. tout le monde qui est venu.